listing a few chosen roles, it would help solve some of your problems. Oh, honey, sweetie, please talk. If I were to let you sing it, the public would butcher us both. No, I've had it with the Italian <laughs> disease known as opera, and the singers that ruin it. You can trust a pig, but a singer will rob you blind and complain about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you need to follow a three-step rule in casting. Pat Penny. First, you hire fallen stars whose fees have shrunk with their range. The public will accept anything from a famous name. True enough. Then you hire some vendors. Tell them what a great opportunity you're giving them. And you pay them nothing. I suppose the third group pays me. Naturally. These are the ones who are blessed with the goods of the world and with talents. My dear Mr. Bluff, what kinds of operas could one possibly not using such dishonest means? The very best. Authentic masterpieces that require more acting than singing. What about scenery, costumes, lighting, the crowd scenes? Announce that you're going to modernize opera. To achieve a sense of intimacy, you will eliminate crowd scenes. Well, that would move things along. To highlight hidden meanings and introspective conflicts, we dispense with scenery. That eliminates the designer. And most of the stage hands. We eliminate costumes like paintings in modern dress. And to intensify realism and mood, we use very little lighting. This is very desirable for most singers. <laughs> <laughs> I think I prefer to be a farmer. But it's all academic anyway. We don't have enough credit to print the tickets, let alone afford to be off on guard. I know things look very dark, miss, but there's a potential dog just outside. Mr. Angel's waiting to see you. Mr. Angel? The banker? That stage-struck Lothario? He's got every soprano in town. What does he want? To see you, Sarge? I'll just show him in. Stop calling me Sarge! It was a long time ago. <laughs> My dear director! What do you want, Mr. Angel? Right to the point. I admire that other woman. Yes. Yes, very nice. Are you aware that for some time I have been in a close relationship with one of the lyric stage's brightest ornaments, Madame Golden Trill? The Madame Golden Trill? The Madame Golden Trill. The Madame Golden Trill. The Madame Golden Trill. <laughs> Be Madame Golden Trill. I heard she retired. Yes. And no. I had hoped that the amenity that had been privileged to provide her would have helped her forget the stage, but apparently she misses the excitement and is determined to make a whole series of farewell performances. With this company? Such a lovely and perceptive woman you are. Such a bold and piercing voice. Back off, Angel Face. I'm not so. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, to be candid, my life with Madame will not be worth living unless you engage her. The truth is that problems of a repertoire. What Ms. Scruples means is, Mr. Angel, is that the repertoire which Madame Goldenshaw would naturally wish to hear is currently beyond the resources of this company. But it would be worth a great deal to me. Seventy-five thousand dollars worth, to be precise. Seventy-five thousand dollars. I'll just bring her in, shall I? No. Time like the present. <laughs> Are we insane? <laughs> I have never accepted money from a singer, and I don't intend to start now. Please don't be angry, Sarge. You deserve this. Seventy-five thousand dollars is more than paid for Madame Golden Trill's performances, which will sell out. And with what's left, you can produce obscure and artistic performances that no one wants to hear. <laughs> but my principles, my ideals, my reputation. Let me go to my farm before she arrives. Too late. Here she is. <laughs>
my dear Miss Scruples has been busy putting together a brilliant season. Why well, only yesterday she was wondering if it might be possible to induce you to lend your luster to our company. A soulmate, a fellow traveler, a priestess of the muses. <laughs> Who is this strange, nervous man? Who is to my assistant and colleague, Mr. Bluff? Um, is your assistant and colleague? <laughs> How nice! <laughs> Such an intelligent expression! <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, madam. I'm a singer too, you know. Yes, I'm sure you think you are. <laughs> <laughs> May I have an autograph? But of course! Darling, be a deal. Now, I will sing. Oh, madam, that's not necessary. Nonsense! Are we not all professionals? I want you to hear how my voice has developed in the upper register without losing any of the dark, lustrous, pear-shaped tones for which my lower register is so famous. <laughs> Make yourselves comfortable and prepare to be amazed. <laughs> Oh, 
words fail me. <laughs> As usual, you are incomparable, my dear. What a voice, what a musician, what art! Thank you, Mr. Fluff. Fluff. Never, <laughs> darling. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Fruples, I am prepared to take on all the dramatic leads for a mere pittance of $2,000 per week. Two thousand? Miss, it's Mr. Angel's money. But two thousand dollars. What Miss Scruples means is that she can hardly think of money in connection with such art as yours. My dear director, the delicacy of your sentiments and more don't make up for the modesty of your offer. Oh, I shall be happy to appear as prima donna assoluta of your distinguished company. You are a shrewd bugger. I'll let you sort out the details. I find business discussions too sordid for words. What just happened? <laughs> A windfall for you, Miss Scruples. Now, I wonder if I may ask another small favor. It so happens that I have a protege, a very young lady who has not yet appeared on stage, but who possesses a most remarkable aptitude. Uh, do you mean to say that you're so... Fraternizing? Fraternizing with two singers at once? Huh. I would think one would be enough. A true patron of the arts? <laughs> <laughs> Let's put it this way. I'm as fascinated with Madame Bolton's past as I am with Miss Silverfield's future. And they both appear to have a distinct bearing on my immediate present. <laughs> My lady, you are the soul of tactful wit. Are you sure you're not a friend? Quite sure. <laughs> <laughs> Just as well. Now that you've strengthened my position with Madame Golden Trill, if you would do the same with me for Miss Silver Q, I would be very, very happy. Why don't you just build a theater of your own? How happy? I'd be prepared to donate you for the hundred thousand dollars. Miss Scruples! Of course, I'd ask for my voice with regards to staging, casting, conducting, promotion, ticket sales, and uh, General running of the theater. Uh, Mr. Ross! <laughs> After all, we find this year's now what the people want. I'll be right back with Miss Silverfield. Don't no. take too long. What happening? Sarge? Stop calling me that. Sorry, Sarge. Stop it. Sorry, Miss. You must admit our prospects are considerably brighter. An hour ago, we had nobody at all. And now we not only have $175,000, but plenty more where that came from. With a banker at the helm. Who will no doubt want to populate the season with showgirls and dancing bears? I like bears. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bluff, Miss Scruples, may I present Miss Silverfield? <laughs> oh, Angie. Let me assure you that her voice matches her beauty. Beauty! <laughs> He's right here. He's got green ear and green eye. As you can plainly see, and as you will plainly hear, you never heard types like mine. What gifts are wrapped up so nicely? I'm so modest. <laughs> Bye. 
very impressed. I'm prepared to offer you a contract. Smaller rules to begin with at $500 a week. Auntie, was that a joke? Listen, lady, if you want me in your little company, you have to give me the companies, three thousand a week, and the backstage may. Oh, I'll put it on. You look real fancy, my sister. Fancy? I'll work out the money and the roles with the screw. But I'll provide the maid. So, you'll provide the maid? Charming. That's why you had me wait outside? So you can arrange for the house. Turn it. To get more than was offered to me? Again, I don't think there was an offer. My dear, I can explain everything. Mm -hmm. Andy, who's the old shovel? <laughs> Andy? Oh, Mr. Angel, do you bet the music can stimulate chickens to lay more eggs? <laughs>
Was man am Tür. 